Hello everyone and welcome to the Santa Clara County real estate market analysis for March of 2023. As we do with all the areas, including Southern Silicon Valley, we take a look at all the latest numbers relating to what homes are selling for, how fast they're selling for, what are the trends we're seeing so that we can get a handle on where we are by looking at where we've been and then merging those things two together and see if we can't figure out what might happen in the coming months in our local market. Now, Santa Clara County is a unique perspective because it's very much that 10,000 foot view where we are looking, we're getting bigger numbers. So the statistics for trends is a lot more reliable than smaller markets where maybe only a handful of homes are involved in the statistical analysis on a month to month basis. So in terms of spotting bigger trends, this is often a great one to use. And in addition to doing the same sort of analysis of data that we do for all the areas that I cover, like San Jose, Morgan Hill and Gilroy, we're also going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into the price reductions that have been happening because I think that's one of the big dynamics. It's one of the things that has to happen as we see declines in property values or at least in sales values uh, so that homes can get sold that, that, that don't end up staying on the market for months and months. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the numbers. First, we'll start with total inventory or active listings in Santa Clara County. And we can see that uh, between March of uh, 2023 and March of 2022, we've literally only got a 1% difference. So we are very much in line with what we were seeing at the same time last year. And now remember, March of last year is when interest rates started to do their big jump. So from there on, things are more like our current market. Not so much in March, right? We were in the very beginnings of those interest rate increases. So an awful lot of what happened in March was more leaning towards the better interest rates simply because most folks locked in their rates the month before because that's when they actually bought that's when they got their contract signed and then it took a month or so for that escrow to close so there's going to be a little lag time between when those interest rates jumped and us seeing it reflected in the market but i think you'll be able to spot that pretty easily from these numbers as well okay so uh not a gigantic inventory increase this march but what's interesting is the month of inventory. Santa Clara County overall has 1.2 months of inventory. And as this is a point I've hit on a lot of other videos, but that is a very low number. So the balanced national number is considered anywhere between five and seven months. Here locally, I think it's probably more realistically 4.5 to 5.5 months is a balanced market. And we're just nowhere near that. So if anything were to occur that would encourage more buyers to jump in, uh, it would definitely instantly sort of flip the switch on that market and turn it into one where multiple offers are the common thing. And as we're going to see here in a few minutes, we're already kind of in a market where much of that is happening in Santa Clara County, uh, reflected mostly by what's happening in San Jose. And if you'd like to check out the San Jose market review I, where I covered that, just go ahead and click wherever it's showing up here uh, above my head to check out the San Jose uh, market analysis for you to review that and, and see what they've been experiencing. All right. If we're going to look at trends, if we look at between February and March of last year, between February and March and this year, we can see that it's a similar relationship, right? February to March, inventory went up. February to March this year, inventory went up. So from March to April, what did we see? A continuing increase in inventory, which actually continued right up until June and July. I would expect we see the same thing this year, but just not as dramatic. It'll, it'll be much smaller increases reaching a lower peak than we saw last year. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with total active listings or total inventory in the coming months. Simply because if we do see a depressed market for buyers where buyers aren't coming out, a whole lot of these homes that get listed over the next few months could end up staying on the market and accumulating. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I think right now it's a tough one to call. It wouldn't surprise me if we see inventory numbers rise but as sellers aren't jumping in with a great deal of enthusiasm, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't see these numbers rising as much as we saw last year. In fact, because we are not seeing that big jump between February and March that we saw between February and March of this year, I would expect to see much more mild increases in the overall inventory of homes in Santa Clara County as we move through the year into the summer months. All right, now let's go ahead and check next the new listings, these are homes that were actually listed in the month of March in 2023. That number is down 38%, which demonstrates what I was just talking about. Far fewer sellers are, or homeowners are interested in becoming sellers in today's market to the tune of 38%. Now, last year, that number was 2,043 homes were added to the market just in March of 2022. This year, that number is down to 1,275. If we want to try and track the trend here, we can see that between 
February and March of last year, we had an increase. We see the same thing this year, but we saw a little bit of a decrease in April between March and April, and it was relatively flat for March, April, May, and June, and then started to decline after that. It wouldn't surprise me if we see the same sort of relative performance here, but again, at the lower level. I don't think we're going to see 2,000 homes being added to the market um, in the next few months, but I, I think it's going to be far lower. I think maybe we'll reach 1,500 in a month, but I think overall we're going to see a low number of sellers jumping into the marketplace. Next, let's go ahead and look at sold and pending numbers. We can see that the total number of sold homes dropped by 40% compared to the same time last year. That left us with uh, 922 homes sold in March of 2023 and 1,514 homes sold in March of 2022. Uh, so very substantial drop. And then the total number of pending homes dropped 46%. That left us with 956 homes that went pending in the March uh, in March of 2023 and in March of 2022 that number was at 1780. So, what we're what we're tracking here is anticipation, right? If you look at the blue line of pendings, you should be able to compare that to the next month. So, for instance, in January of 2022, we had 889 homes go pending. We actually had more homes close. That kind of makes sense because some escrows last longer. If a home went pending in the last week of January, it obviously isn't going to close most likely uh, in February. So a little bit of a discrepancy there is normal. And then look at uh, February to March. We see that we closed far more homes than went pending the month before. So clearly most of those homes closed, plus perhaps some others that were longer escrows, or perhaps some even had escrows that were shorter than a month that, that actually went into escrow at the beginning of the month. But it's just sort of a way to, to see where things are going. Given that we saw a relatively big jump from January to February, um, we saw that in January we're at 514 and in February 549. February we saw 820 and then we were up to 922 in March, 956 pending. So we would expect to see another uptick next month in the number of homes sold. So it's a great way to look a little bit into the crystal ball here to see what we're likely going to get in terms of sold homes uh, by comparing that to the pending homes. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at average original list price for March of 2023 for Santa Clara County. Now this is an interesting one to consider because it is a indicator of the mindset of sellers. This is what their expectations were. This is what a seller believed was a reasonable price to sell their home for at the time that they put it on the market. Now, overall, we can see that this number is up 8.2% from the same time last year. So think of that as, as expecting 8.2% more for your home this year than at the same time last year, right? That, that's where expectations are on the part of sellers. Now, the numbers for that in, uh, are interesting. Last year in March, we had the average original list price of 1727000 this year, in March of 2023, that number was at 1869000 So not a small increase, uh, but overall, we saw the peak in February of $1.9 with a little bit of a dip in March, which is interesting. Normally in February and March, the beginning of the listing season, you'll start to see a little bit of a lopsidedness of more expensive properties being listed simply because those folks are coming on at the, at the peak of, of the opportunity time to get their home listed and sold which is often often in the, these markets defined as the February, March timeframe, so that they're right at the beginning of when things start to peak. And things have started to peak earlier in the year than most people think. A lot of people think June, July. Well, if you, if you want to get that offer, as we've seen from homes that have gone pending, when the offer was accepted, this is really the time frame that you want to be taking a look at that. Now, in terms of trends, you can see that things really ramped up. From January of 2022, things sort of just went up. Things kind of remained flat or declining a bit all through uh, 2022. We had a bit of, that, of a jump here at the beginning and in March. And you're going to see an interesting correlation between these numbers we're seeing and what we're going to see here in a minute in terms of uh, price ratios. So let, let's come to that next. I don't think that's actually next, but we'll, we'll deal with average price next. But what I'm hoping to, for you to see is the, dis, the, the difference between expectations and realities of what is happening in the marketplace. So seller expectations up 8.2%. And now we take a look at the next slide. This is reality. This is what the average sales price has been for homes in Santa Clara County. And it's actually down 7.7%. So it went the other direction. And it doesn't mean that each individual home that's at certain prices should be dropped in price. It simply means that the dominant activity on the part of buyers is at lower price points. 
This is absolutely something you can navigate with a little smart data analysis on where the price banding is. So if you're working with your agent, hopefully that's the kind of smart approach they're using to figure out where you are on the price banding and whether where activity is in the various price bands that you could potentially be participating in. But anyway, so definitely down again, 7.7%. Last year, the average sales price was 1,871,000. The average sales price this year, 1,877,000. Uh, and the trend here isn't too hard to spot. It's a downward trend from the peak last year in April of 2022 with a little bit of an uptick now at the beginning of the season. And remember, that's what happens in March, April, May. We start when, when the, the that's when the sales start to hit. Right. So that's why we see increases in average sales price as demand increases. And the very next thing we're gonna look at, as I was alluding to a minute ago, gives you that insight into that demand. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is the percent of list price. And this is a little bit of a way to look into the mindset of buyers. We were checking out the seller's mindset a moment ago. Now we're looking into the minds of buyers. And this represents offers made and what the sales, what the list price was at the time the offer was made and accepted. So not the original list price. So whether if the price was increased or decreased, the, what's this reflects the time the buyer looked at the home and then made an offer. And this is what they had to do in order to secure that home in a contract. We now have the second month in a row where on average homes sold for over asking price. Last year in March of 2022, homes were selling for 15.3% over asking price or 115.3%. This year, that number is at 102.3. So still over asking price, which implies a couple of things. One, it implies that there are definitely properties out there that are desirable enough to buyers that they will offer over asking price, but it also implies that in some markets we're seeing multiple offers. So, and we've had that now for two months in a row. It makes sense that we would see this bit of uptick at this time of year, but it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here because take a look at what happened last year. In March of last year, we peaked at 115.3%. From there on, it went down. Now, granted, some of that was simply due to the fact that price, uh, the, the cost and price of a loan was higher, interest rates were higher. But if we just consider that trend as is, even though we are already in that reality of higher interest rates, we should still expect things to go down from here. So this 2.3% over asking price is likely going to be the peak in 2023 in terms of getting over asking price. And it wouldn't surprise me if we get to numbers that again return to being below 100 in other words, below list price on these homes. We'll see how that goes. Again, there could be some interesting changes in the market that increase the number of buyers for one reason or another that would then increase demand, which would then put more stress on the already extremely low inventory. But we'll have to see how that pans out. If all things stay the same, these numbers are likely going to go down from here. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at days on market. This is how long it takes a home to get sold right here in Santa Clara County. The average number last year was 11, per, 11 days. Uh, very short and probably would have been shorter if agents weren't putting requirements in listings like we will not consider offers until such and such a date. But it's up 127% since then to 25 days. So under 30 days, which on average for the entire county is great, uh, cons particularly considering that in some smaller communities, this number is, has been over 30 days and has stayed there for a while. But again, let's look at trends. We can see that last year, March, April, May represented the low points in terms of days on market. But then from May of last year all the way up until January, we had increases in days on market. So it was taking longer for homes to get sold. We were also seeing below asking price offers being accepted. My guess is we'll see this be very close to the low point. It'll be this month or next month that represents the low point in days on market. And then again, we'll see those start to ramp up as we move further into 2023. Just sort of trying to look into the crystal ball a little bit here. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at price reductions in Santa Clara County. Uh, we can see that 22.6% of the homes in Santa Clara County had a price reduction in March of 2023. Last month, that number was 19.2. So why did that number go up? Well, Plenty of homes that are now facing going into March or hitting March and trying to figure out how to best navigate this new market decided it was time to lower their price to match what's going on in the marketplace. This is, this is the, the end result of several months we've talked about where homes were going on the market at above uh, at, at rates higher than last year in terms of expectations on sellers being out of whack and a little bit higher than they should be. 
That's what happens when you list too high. You end up having to reduce your price. So we can see that compared to last month, and because we're starting to head into this month of March, which is typically the beginning of the season, things are getting a little bit more stressful. Sellers and agents put their heads together and decided at a greater number, we need to adjust our asking price in order to take advantage of this period of time when we're likely to have the most buyers out there looking for a home to purchase. So hopefully that works out well for them. Now, I want to get a little bit more into it, and I'm still trying to figure out where this belongs. I'd love to get some feedback from you all. Where do you think my discussion of price reductions belongs uh, on this one? Uh, I'm, uh, I I'm running big numbers here in terms of price reduction because I think it's an important dynamic in the way the market exists today. I don't think it's something I'll cover forever, uh, but while we're in a market in decline, price reductions are an important one to track because it's a good way to see in real time, how well, not necessarily real time, but at least month to month, how the market is adapting to the new reality relating to what homes are selling for. Uh, now, if you take a look at the screen here, I've got a summary of all of the price reductions that took place in March of 2023, broken down by city. So you can get an idea and see here's what the average price reduction was in San Jose, 127,000. Now, overall, let's look at the overall county numbers. The average was $172,827. And that's just the average, right? If we look at the median, it was 100,000. So at $100,000, half of the total number of the 344, right? So 162 were above this amount, above 100,000, and 162 were below this amount, right? Um, no, 72, 172. Uh, so anyway, that, and just just so you're getting an idea of the distribution, right? It's when when the average and the median are super close, it's a lot easier. Uh, but th what that basically tells you is that there was a there were uh, the the weight of where these price reductions were were above this point, meaning which makes sense, right? The, the higher priced properties are the ones experiencing the most stress right now. There are much fewer buyers at that level. And we can see all the various communities here that are represented. So, you know, you can see perhaps your favorite city, San Jose. The average was 127,000, almost 128. Palo Alto was 242,000 on average. Uh, Gilroy was 109,000, uh, which is a little bit of a surprise given what's going on in Gilroy. Uh, for those of you who'd like to check out my Gilroy market analysis, that's also up on YouTube and available and also at soldbyrobert.com if you'd like to check that out. Uh, Morgan Hill, only 93,000, so below the median for the county, which is interesting. Uh, we had a highest of 3,112,000 was the biggest price drop. That's a real price drop. Uh, I did review this number to make sure that it wasn't some sort of an error. Uh, it was a Los Altos Hills home. Uh, the only one there, it had been on the market, it, it had been on the market for 14 million and got dropped to 10.88 after 165 days, which actually, and that's a, that's a sad story too, right? That, it's a beautiful, beautiful home. If, and, and when you realize how long it's been on the market, if that price had been correctly set at the beginning, that thing would have sold 140 days ago <clears throat> for more than it could possibly sell for today. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, where else? Uh, Sunnyvale, 203,000 was the was the average. Campbell, 159. Mountain View, 122. Cupertino, only 92,000 was the average change. And some of these ones with the smaller changes are interesting places that are interesting because they're tending to sell more quickly. They're more in-demand areas. Uh, Saratoga, one of my favorite areas. I used to live right near Saratoga. I went to Limbrook High School, and Saratoga is sort of right there. I remember when the Miljevich Farm was uh, still there, um, where it's not there anymore. Uh, but anyway, I don't, sorry, going into the weeds. Uh, but anyway, that's a that's a substantial drop for Saratoga. Uh, but uh, Saratoga, as, as an area that I have kept track of, does tend to be um, uh, experiencing some overpriced expectations in terms of its local stuff. If we want to look at the total um, maximums for each one of these, here's one where the maximum reduction is 1.5 million right here in San Jose. Uh, 1 million in Santa Clara, 1 million in Sunnyvale, 1 million 7, 712,000 in San Martin. I'm very familiar with that particular, or, or excuse me, uh, 545,000. I'm, I'm actually pretty familiar with, with that market. Los Gatos, 1 million 712, 1 million 893,000 in Stanford, Saratoga, 2.5 million. And we can see the uh, price, drops, dr price drops here. This was a home that was listed at 7.4 million, dropped to 4.988. 
It's been on the market for 144 days. Now, we can we could t- look more at this, but I, I think another thing that's interesting to check out is what's the average days on market, right? We know that the average days on market overall was what? 25 days in the county. 73 days is the average for the homes that have had a price reduction. The median is 54 days, 54.5. So half of the homes that had a price reduction were above that and half were below that uh, with a max of 553 days. Um, so, and, and these are conversations. When you're hitting a week or two weeks, you need to start having conversations. In our markets today, I, I know I do this and I'm sure there are other agents that do this that have milestones. And if I haven't seen a certain number of views of my listing on places like Zillow or Trulia, if I haven't gotten a certain number of inquiries, if I haven't had a certain number of people viewing the property, and I know that because my lockbox gives me the data of what real estate agents open my lockboxes on my properties. If I'm not seeing a level of traffic that statistically makes sense, given my 30 years of experience, I want to know why. So we need to start figuring that out. And one of the first things to figure out is, is it the price or is there something else wrong? Nine times out of 10, it's going to be your price, but it's always good to do that full sweep to figure out what's going on. Okay. Uh, in terms of other things we might want to tease out here, uh, just the total number in each one. We see we've got 163 in San Jose, 20 in Palo Alto, handful in Milpitas, uh, you know, a handful in Cupertino, small numbers in Stanford. So in terms of total number of, of properties with a reduction, very small, Portola Valley, Montesorino, uh, Los Altos Hills. A lot of people don't even know Montesorino exists. It's kind of wedged between Los Gatos and, uh, you know, Sa- uh, San Jose, Saratoga. Um, but anyway, that I think that's a, a pretty good deep dive. For those of you who are interested in more data on this or more perspectives on this, this is one where I'd really love to get your feedback. So feel free to comment below. If you're on YouTube watching this, you can put the comment into YouTube. If you're watching this on my website at soldbyrobert.com, there's a place to comment right at the bottom of the page for the show. So feel free to ask it there. Or if you'd like to contact me, just click that contact me button and send it to me that way. I'd be happy to get your feedback. All right, folks, as always. The goal is to leave you with more knowledge on the table than I take up in your time. Absolutely hope we've accomplished that this time. Thanks again for listening, and I'll talk to you all next time.